Hey, welcome back to the Cube, everybody. We're here in New York City. Come on inside. We are wrapping up a day-long deep dives into MongoDB, MongoDB's ecosystem, and we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up where the rubber meets the road. Ashman Palmer is here. He's the vice president for financial services for Gen AI Center of Excellence at Cap Gemini. Ashman, thanks so much for coming to the Cube. Great to see you. Thank you for having me, Dave. Yeah, you're very welcome. So you're in the heart of it all. New York City, it's, it's the money capital of the world. London would argue with that, but we'll take New York City. And so we've been just talking all day about customers, how they're applying AI, you know, how they can get more ROI out of it, because they're struggling right now, a lot of experimentation. But start with your role, your focus on FS. Yeah. Share with the audience what you what absolutely. You, so I'm I'm doing a couple of roles. You know, my, my uh, one job is to uh, to lead the data and AI practice globally for financial services uh, for Capgemini, and then secondly, you know, about a year ago, I took an uh, an additional role to lead the uh, center of excellence around uh, generative AI for financial services globally. And in that capacity, you know, uh, we are looking at how can we uh, generate value, how can we drive uh, e efficiency and productivity gains. Uh, using uh, Gen AI across the value chain uh, for our clients, both on the banking as well as on the insurance side. Nice, so you're at the heart of it. So you guys have announced this $2 billion investment in, in Gen AI. Give us the details around that. What are the yeah. specifics? So we are only one of the three uh, global SIs who have made a, such a big commitment uh, towards uh, AI and, and Gen AI. Uh, so over the next uh, three years, uh, you know, we will be investing $2 billion and uh, we're using it primarily for uh, three or four different things. Uh, number one, uh, we are going to be doubling uh, our, um, our capacity in terms of data and AI experts globally uh, from uh, around 33,000 uh, to 60 plus thousand uh, over the, uh, the next uh, three years. Uh, secondly, uh, we were looking at a, a number of um, uh, value-based uh, solutions uh, you know, who are, which are uh, focused on the, on the sectors or the verticals. Uh, and how we can uh, help our clients uh, uh, reap the benefits of, of generative AI, uh, but in the in the domain context, in the uh, context of, of their business. Uh, and then, um, you know, lastly, we are also uh, investing heavily uh, with, with our partners like MongoDB and others, uh, where we are uh, jointly co-developing uh, solutions and taking it to the market. Uh, one other thing, you know, we are also forward-looking. So we have uh, AI, uh, you know, lab setup, uh, which is looking at uh, six years down the road, um, you know, in, in terms of what is coming down the pike and how we can uh, prepare now uh, to reap the benefits, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, when, when the moment arrives. So you're doubling the number of AI experts at your firm from 33,000 to, to 60,000 plus over the next three years. That's, Did I hear that correctly? That is absolutely correct. Now, in addition to that, we are training about 100,000 people globally on AI and Gen AI wow. uh, to make sure that all... Um, AI and Gen AI literate so that we can apply uh, it, it effectively for the value generation. That's in addition to, or is that yes. included? Yes, so uh, 33,000 to 60,000 are uh, the AI practitioners, and then we are um, you know, uh, doing a, a mass um, enablement uh, for the AI and Gen AI technologies globally so that everybody is AI literate within, uh, within our company. So the obvious question, I thought, I thought AI was going to kill all these jobs, but you're doubling yeah, the number of headcount that's yeah. focused on AI. Explain to people why people are still needed. Yeah, so you, you know, if you look back at um, uh, internet, right? When internet came, you know, people thought uh, that was going to kill, uh, you know, uh, the jobs. Now, if internet goes down, you know, you, you, there will be significant impact across the board. So I, I think you know, AI and Gen AI uh, will will actually add value. It will uh, allow uh, you know uh, the talent uh, to focus on the things. Um, uh, which, which can you know be more creative, you know more um, uh, you know generating value as opposed to doing the Monday routine task, uh, which can then be outsourced and augmented with um, uh, AI and Gen AI. So uh, you know we are not seeing a, 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 it adversely impacting uh, in terms of our business or our clients' business. Uh, you know it, uh, it will uh, increase the throughput, it will increase uh, the productivity and the efficiency, uh, and it will help us uh, transform uh, some of the uh, inefficient uh, business processes. I'm going to show you a picture because the second thing you talked about is focus on specific sectors, domain specificity. So this is a picture of, and I'll describe it, well, you can, you can grok it, uh, I'll describe it for the audience. This is a picture of a power law. You know, power law, imagine just a right angle. And in some industries, you know, power law, you have a couple of, maybe a handful of dominant players, and you have this long tail of smaller players. 
what we did is we took liberties with the power law. We had the vertical axis was the size of the model. So you got the big giant model players, you know, OpenAI and Anthropic, et cetera, there. And then the long tail is domain specificity. Yep. Okay, so that's kind of what you were talking about before. Now, the torso is not a hard right angle because of open source and third parties pulling up that, that torso. So it's a, a very interesting dynamic. Yeah. So first of all, so we, we did this shortly after ChatGPT came out. So this is how we see it. I think it's evolving this way. Yeah. Do you see it that way? Are customers actually starting to build along that long tail? Yeah, like the, the way we look at the uh, AI and Gen AI use case is, is in two dimensions, as I was mentioning. You know, one side is the value dimension, other side is the uh, operation efficiency uh, dimension. On the value side, you know, you can apply AI and Gen AI uh, in two ways. You know, one is you can do uh, the expert augmentation, uh, or you can, you know, have AI and Gen AI run a autonomously, right? And then if you look at uh, the X dimension, right, similar to what the chart that you are showing me, you, you know, you, you can start with the large models which are, you know, developed on uh, inter internet uh, available, uh, you know, uh, corpus of data. Um, and, and then if you go up, you know, you, you become more specialized, right? So then you train with uh, industry-specific data, then you train with your own, uh, you know, company-specific data or your line of business, uh, you know, specific data. So as you move up the chain, you know, your specialization becomes, you know, more tighter your differentiation becomes, uh, you know, uh, more profound. Uh, and, and that is how, you know, you can also control uh, some of the side effects of, um, you know, Gen AI hallucinations uh, and so forth, and, and really, you know, control uh, the outcome and, and really make an impact uh, from the value generation perspective. Are customers doing this on-prem? It seems like there's a lot of action in the cloud. We've, we've talked to customers who've said, you, you know, we're a little nervous yeah. about that data leaking. You know, you can do VPC and stuff in the cloud, but we don't necessarily want to move the data. We, we have a lot of data on-prem. We have yep. a lot of data in the cloud. We want to bring the AI to the data. I'm not saying repatriation. I'm not a repatriate. But but are you seeing that activity on-prem? Yeah, so we, we, we see, you know, both extremes. You know, we see some clients who are, uh, you know, adopting, uh, you know, cloud and Gen AI in a big way and, and having, uh, you know, a production-ready applications which are customer-facing on the internet. And then there is other, you know, more conservative, uh, you know, organizations uh, who tend to be, um, you know, really concerned about uh, the data leakage, the IP leakage, uh, you know, uh, to the uh, some of the, uh, you know, the the external models, and they're looking more for on-prem, uh, you know, type of deployment. So we see both uh, spectrum, uh, you know, of uh, use cases. Uh, you know, for people who are concerned about the safety and soundness of AI and Gen AI. Uh, you know, we, we tend to recommend, uh, you know, having a human in the loop. Uh, you know, that seems to control, um, um, you know, uh, the risk. At the same time, you know, reap the benefits out of it. But, you know, you, you do need a strong governance process uh, in place, whether you are on site or, you know, on, on the cloud. We were talking to somebody from Meta last year, actually, late last year, who kind of inferring the downloads, this was Llama 2, they inferred that close to half of the downloads very well could be companies doing things on-prem. So that sort of validates, you, you know, what you're saying there. Where does MongoDB fit into all this? Where do they fit into your $2 billion investment over three years, by the way? That's yeah. pretty good. A lot of times people say $2 billion over 15 years. Yeah. And so three years, that's really compressing it. Of course, a lot of that's people, but where does Mon MongoDB fit? So you know, we have been, you know, working with uh, MongoDB for quite some time, you know, primarily on the, uh, you know, data modernization type of, um, uh, you know, programs, right? But uh, over the, the last, uh, you know, year or so since the, you know, Gen AI became, uh, you know, the, the, the all the rage, right? Uh, we have developed a number of uh, industry-focused, uh, you know, solutions, uh, you know, which are built on top of the MongoDB atlas. In fact, uh, you know, a, a couple of hours ago, I was presenting, uh, you know, one such use case, uh, you know, we call it uh, Gen Yoda, which is a, a solution which is, uh, you know, built uh, specific for the insurance industry, uh, where, you know, we, we, we are using it to, to make the underwriting more efficient, you know, claim processing, uh, more efficient uh, in the contact center, more efficient, uh, but in the context of the of the domain, right? And and the under uh, under the hood is uh, MongoDB, you know, with the uh, the collections and the and the vector search. Uh, so it's, it's been working, you know, quite nicely. Uh, you know, we have been able to uh, ingest a large corpus of data uh, in a short amount of time. So the scalability uh, and the performance has been, you know, working out quite nicely. Uh, so in addition to you know, Jan that I mentioned, there are 
uh, five or six other uh, you know industry uh, solutions that we have built in partnership with uh, um, you know with Mongo, and we will continue uh, to invest uh, you know as more and more use cases uh, surface. What are you seeing that are the main blockers for a, uh, uh, AI, Gen AI specifically adoption? We're seeing you know a lot of experimentation. We see a lot of rag. Yeah, it's actually pretty easy to do. Maybe not at scale. Maybe not govern. But you can you can you can build a yeah a, a proof of concept pretty easily. Uh, but but uh, many customers are saying we're still really in search of that big ROI use case. Not, not so much the ROI, but the NPV. Yeah. Right? The size of the benefit is not there. You can get quick hits, definitely productivity, but they're like small little hits. What are you seeing as the the adoption barriers? or the blockers to get sort of bigger ROI? Yeah, I think, you know, the primary apprehension is about, um, you know, the, the safety and soundness, right? Losing your IP, losing, uh, you know, the data or uh, having, uh, you know, the solutions do unintended, uh, you know, things, right? So, which are, you know, valid concerns, right? Uh, a lot of the times we also see um, in the uh, prototypes and proof of concepts, um, you know, uh, things work, you know, spectacularly well, but as you scale that up, with uh, you know thousands of uh, you know unstructured um, uh, you know documents, then you know things um, you know start to hallucinate. Uh, so having the adequate you know guardrail in terms of you know your training data, having the adequate uh, you know guardrails for your for your model, and then you know also on the uh, outcome side, how how are you using the output coming out uh, you know from some of these models, you know are extremely uh, important, right? And and um, you know the, the regulatory landscape is also evolving, right, with the EU AI Act, uh, you know, being one yep. of the first one, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, bringing the risk, uh, you know, perspective in terms of the high risk activities are uh, monitored um, or prohibited, right, uh, and, and the, you know, the low risk, you know, you can you go all out, right, so finding the right balance of, you know, how much uh, risk exposure that you have, uh, having the adequate governance and, and uh, oversight uh, is critical, right, so, uh, you know, uh, we, we tend to uh, use the expert in the loop, uh, for anything which is consequential uh, in terms of decision making, uh, but uh, you know uh, the, the uh, things like the uh, operational efficiencies, be it on the software engineering side or on the uh, creative side in in the marketing space, you know those things. Uh, you know we see a lot of uh, production ready use cases. So you see a lot. You have a big wide observation space. You guys are uh, consulting with a lot of organizations. I'm interested in your thoughts on. Two questions. So there's a, a lot of companies in the database business that are a couple actually developing LLMs. You saw Databricks and Snowflake develop their own uh, uh, LLM. Mongo's not doing that. And Dave has said, we're not doing that. That's what, we're going to put our R&D elsewhere. Um, the, the, so I wonder what you get the, your thoughts on that. The second part of that question is I've had some financial services companies tell me that they're going to build their own LLMs. Yeah. And I, I was initially surprised to hear that they're actually working with semiconductor firms to try to, whether it's their specific use case, try to drive low latency, maybe they're worried about uh, uh, open source licenses, et cetera. Remember when the early days of the cloud, I, I, banks used to tell me, we're going to build our own cloud. We can, we, we're, we're better at IT than the hyperscalers. Well, that didn't work out. Is it a similar situation here? Yeah. Or are there really valid reasons why uh, end customers will actually build their own LLMs. Yeah, so I mean there, there are three models in terms of you know leveraging the LLMs. You know you can buy uh, off the shelf and use it as is. You know then you can buy, you can customize it, right? And then third is to uh, you know build your own, right? Um, you know to be honest, I, I've not come across a lot of you know clients who are inclined to do uh, you know build their own models uh, just because it's, it's a, a massive undertaking, right? It will, it will require substantial amount of uh, investment in terms of the capital, in terms of the people, and and and, and the infrastructure, uh, you know, to support that. And on the, uh, you know, the uh, outside of that, uh, the, the return is not, you know, really clear, right? Uh, uh, that that will generate. So, you know, most of the clients, uh, you know, that we work uh, with globally, uh, tend to be, you know, falling in the second bucket where, you know, they will take uh, an LLM and then train them with, you know, their corpus of data within, you know, their their sector. Uh, the, the second, you know, trend that, that we start to see is, uh, you know, there's a, a, a trend away from the large models to more, uh, you know, smaller, you know, purpose-built, you know, model, you know, in terms of uh, the performance, uh, you know, they tend to be doing quite well. 
Uh, so it doesn't make sense, you know, to build your own model uh, in most cases, um, uh, you know, so we don't see that a whole lot. What do you tell customers about that other risk that I, I mentioned that was mentioned to me about the, the, the licensing terms in open source models? We're worried it's going to, they're going to pull the rug out from underneath us. Uh, us. How, do you, how do you manage that risk? Um, so we, you know, we, uh, we have actually built a um, an experiment platform we, uh, called Genesis, and it allows you know customers to to look at the the use case, be that on the technology side, or uh, you know uh, on on a value uh, you know uh, use case, be it marketing, sales, um, you know underwriting, risk, you know whatever, right? And depending on you know uh, the use case and what they're trying to do. Uh, we, we we have a library of uh, you know models that can you know do that effectively, and and using Genesis in a blind test, you know we allow them uh, to to check for accuracy, you know completeness, um, you know uh, costs, uh, you know etc. Uh, and then they select okay what makes sense as opposed to being biased by you know one versus the other. Uh, and then we we run this uh, you know uh, experiments with a large uh, you know set of people at the different um, uh, you know capability. Uh, and then use that to make an informed decision. So that works, uh, you know, quite nice. Very nice. What's next for you? What's next is to, you know, continue, you know, driving more value-driven, um, you know, uh, use cases and then see how we can use this to uh, to really transform, uh, you know, some of the uh, inefficient, uh, you know, processes and even, you know, produce, um, uh, you know, new service lines, right? So so that's, that's where we are thinking about. Well, congratulations. Um, really impressed with the, the, the multi-billion dollar investment. Would love to have you back to talk about the progress and the learnings and, and the results you're seeing with, with clients. Ashwin, thanks so much for Look coming on theCUBE. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, and thank you for watching. That's a wrap from MongoDB Local. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Go to siliconangle.com. You'll see all the news. Go to thecuberesearch.com is our research site. And of course, thecube.net is where you'll find all these assets on demand. We've got, don't, don't forget, go to thecubeai.com, sign up for our public beta. Thank you so much for watching. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and the entire team, great job. And thank you to MongoDB. We'll see you next time.